。今天这个视频呢，一共有三个目标。第一就是教你们如何做到最便宜的车。The second is to make you feel confident that by the end of this film you can go out and book a car straight away anywhere in China. 第三就是怎么样在租车的时候避坑。<laughs> We've been in quite a lot of kung, right? <laughs> 我们最近在内蒙这边，还有在新疆，包括现在在西宁，我们一直在租车，租车，然后租了很多车。Right now we're in Qinghai, actually. As you can probably hear, it's raining, so we decided to film this film for you guys instead. 而且现在我们这个也是一个租的车。Yes, it is. <laughs> 我们第一次租车应该就是在内蒙古呼伦贝尔的时候，那个时候我没有什么经验，我先找了软件，就是美团，去上面搜租车。我的策略呢，就是给四五个公司打电话，然后同时问他们最便宜的车是多少钱，然后去对比，就会选择一家比较便宜的出。然后呢，选择完出来之后呢，跟他们加微信，然后继续砍价。如果你租三天的话，那也能够省几十块钱。反正就是对比多加。Try and use everything that you can to your advantage. For example, use the amount of days that you're going to rent as a bargaining point. Use the fact that you won't be driving very far as a bargaining point. All of these things can help you get the price a little bit lower. But you recently found a potentially better way to do this, right? 是的，就是美团租车呢，它有很多缺点。其实你要先给别人打电话，然后加对方的联系方式。可能你们会微信联系，对最后。的话，你还给他微信转账啊，包括转那个押金，然后最后押金能不能退给你？你会感觉担心呀、啊，你感觉这个人我也跟他不熟，这个押金会不会给我退呢？我就有这样的担心。一开始 ，Obviously you check the reviews, but there's always that kind of worry in your heart, like will he really give the full deposit back? And we haven't always got the full deposit back. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a bit. 本来我以为美团可以走线上的，但是呢，它有很多便宜的车，比如说一天一百多块钱那种的话，打电话问，结果就是说这个车没有，或者是说租七天的话，首天的那个价格，所以呢，你不敢贸然下单，下单的话别人。可能也会让你取消这个美团上线上支付不太靠谱。直到我们最近发现，原来支付宝里边也有很多租车的这种功能，你可以就是直接输入租车，会出来很多家大公司，然后点进去有很多车型可以选择。最重要的是它可以免押金。这个免的意思不是说你不需要押金，而是说你可以用你的支付宝的芝麻信用可以去抵扣那个押金，也就是说你不用担心你的钱会发给一个陌生人，然后他可能又不退给你的这个风险。你可以通过支付宝下单，也不用有任何私下的交易。目前来说是一个非常靠谱的一个方法。我们这个车就是押金。五千块钱，如果是我走线下的话呢，我要给他转账，到时候会有各种各样的借口给你扣钱呀，或者说不给你退，都是有可能的。但是如果通过支付宝的话呢，因为是平台嘛，官方平台，那个钱是不会给你少掉的。Okay, so once you know that you've got your price locked and you're comfortable with it and you think you've got a good deal, the next thing to start thinking about is to make sure that you're not going to get any extra fees or fall into any traps and pitfalls that might happen along the way. A good thing to do is to check the contract. 如果走线下的话呢，他会给你一个这样的协议。我最近有一个大坑，就是在新疆阿勒泰那个时候租的一个车，他给我签了一个协议，然后当时有四五页，但是呢，他没有给我留一份像这样子的复印的，当时我也没有知道。这个是个问题，就是我自己没有看协议，我就把它给签了。但是发现它有一个隐藏的条款，啊、呃，如果车子回来需要洗的话，要从押金里面扣五十块钱的清洁费。直到退押金的时候，他才跟我说，像这样的话就是出现了一些不愉快。像他们这个公司呢，应该就是利用人们就是不把协议看完全这样的一个心态，然后也不给你协议，到最后给你拍照片，告诉你，哎，你看这个是有条款的，所以这个钱你必须要出。If you can't get a copy like this, then just take a photo. So as well as the cleaning fee, the Alice said there are a few other things you need to check. For example, the mileage of the car is there a mileage limit? For example, a 300 kilometer or 400 kilometer limit per day that you can drive. They might also create a range limit. For example, we've rented scooters before in Thailand where you could only drive within the city. And if you go outside, they might have a tracker and they might check that, and then you might lose your deposit. So those are things to be careful about as well. So a couple more things to think about if you're trying to get their price as low as possible. One is to book in advance because if you're booking like on the day or the day before you're trying to book the car, then the cheapest cars are likely going to be sold out. It's going to be really hard to get a good deal. The other thing is to avoid the high seas. Season, if that's possible for you, traveling outside of the high season is obviously going to be cheaper in every regard. But this is especially true when you're talking about cars. This car, for example, that we're getting now, the cheapest we could find in Qinghai, Xining, was 300 per day.、Mm. But in the high season, that would have been four or five hundred. He said for the same car.、Mm. Definitely adds up if you're going to book for multiple days. 其实说到三百块钱，我们这个车不是最便宜的。我们租过最便宜的车是在吐鲁番，两百块钱一天。所以呢，可能也看地区的。Another thing you've got to think about when you're factoring in everything, as well as obviously the petrol, is just there are tolls in a lot of places. Usually around 20 to 
40 UN. So if you're driving for 100 kilometers, expect to pay at least one toll based on our experience. A few other little things to be aware of are making sure that you get the car back on time or at least talking to them to say, is it okay if we bring the car back like an hour late or whatever? 一般要提前说好,这样子的话,他们就没有理由去让你,比如说算你半天的钱或者算你一天的钱. If it's a big company, you have less chance of leeway in that regard. If you get any speeding fines or whatever, they're going to take it away from your deposit, probably. So obviously be aware of that. And check if the car can go off-road, because not every car can. If you are planning to go somewhere that you're likely to go into the mountains or off-road on, you're probably just going to want to look at a four-wheel drive car. Anyway. Which means more expensive. would be very great. Okay, to show you the last few pitfalls and stuff to avoid, we need to go out the car itself. So this is something most of us will think of to do automatically. Basically, we want to do a check of the car and record that as we go. If anything happens afterwards, we know the state of the car before we rented it. And I always like to check that the underneath is fine as well. So the main things we're looking for as we're going around the car are any marks or dents or scratches or whatever because obviously we don't want to be blamed for something that was already there before we even rented the car. There are two more things we need to photograph before we start so let's have a look at those as well. We want to get a couple of photos of the dashboard here because it's going to tell us the mileage, it's going to tell us how much fuel there is and it's going to tell us if there's any warning signs already coming up on the car. I have to start this car for it to show up. Alright, so that's it for our check. If you guys have any more better tips about renting a car in China, then leave them down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and